Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions too. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, starting with Michigan Technological University. All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is Nanette Carlson and I am the Minnesota Regional Admissions Manager for Michigan Tech based in the Twin Cities area. So thank you, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. So Michigan Tech, now my slides are not working, there we go. Okay, Michigan Technological University is a comprehensive research university with a STEM focus. With about 7,000 students, we're the perfect size for a student who wants to feel at home and have almost endless opportunities. We're located in Houghton, Michigan, which is in the Upper Peninsula, about a six to seven hour drive from the Twin Cities metro area. Our students at Michigan Tech build and launch nano satellites. They also make prosthetic ankles better and they connect robots with students. This year alone, Michigan Tech undergrads will spend 126,000 hours working alongside faculty mentors on paid research. Huskies go on to earn the ninth highest starting salaries in the country at a median uh, salary of $65,000 a year. So it's a future like no other for our graduates. Included in Michigan Tech's tuition and fees is access to all of the stuff that you see on the screen here. Once on campus, our Huskies experience a truly residential college experience with tight-knit dorm communities and more than 240 student clubs and organizations. New this year at Michigan Tech is co-ed varsity esports, which we're super excited about. Um, otherwise, our athletics, we have NCAA, NCAA Division II sports for men and women and Division I men's hockey. Um, so now let's move on and talk a little bit about the admissions process. So we have always had a free application at Michigan Tech uh, and students usually hear back from, from us in about two to three weeks after applying and submitting their transcripts. So it's a very quick turnaround. Uh, we require a 2.75 uh, GPA with a minimum 1110 SAT or 22 ACT. Without test scores, we would need the GPA to be at a 3.0. Um, the average freshman arrives on campus with a 3.78 GPA and a 1260 SAT or 27 ACT. So world-class education is an investment. Uh, Non-Michigan residents are looking at a total cost of around $51,000 a year. Note that tuition is a flat rate for 12 to 18 credits. So we wanna make sure that we help students budget for their annual expenses while still being able to explore courses outside of their major. More than 90% of students uh, qualify for financial aid and a wide range of automatic merit scholarships as well as competitive scholarships. In addition, co-ops and internships help students earn money while gaining incredibly valuable practical experience. More than 415 companies recruit our students on campus at the nation's second largest career fair. So next up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of our um, popular campus traditions. So Winter Carnival um, is a celebration of all things winter. Uh, each February, students get a four-day weekend to build snow sculptures, they race dogs, they compete in human ice bowling, and just enjoy the inevitable snow. Um, they average about 218 inches a year uh, in the Houghton area. Next up is Broomball, which um, if you're not familiar with what Broomball is, think hockey with a ball, but on shoes and with brooms instead of sticks. And then we also have our Parade of Nations, which is where we capture the spirit and unity of our incredibly diverse community by parading through the city in traditional dress, followed by celebrations all across campus. And then, of course, homecoming. Um, cardboard boat racing isn't always successful, but it's always a highlight of homecoming. So 
thank you so much for joining me tonight. And if you want to learn more, here's my contact information and I will also put it in the chat. Great, thank you, Nanette. And our next school is gonna be Oregon State University. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Alexis Colbert, and I am the Regional Admissions Advisor for Oregon State. So I am the Admissions Advisor for everyone in the Central Time Zone. So I'll be your advisor. And I'm really just going to jump straight into this because we don't have a lot of time. So Oregon State is located right in Corvallis, Oregon. And Corvallis translated literally means heart of the valley. So we're located really centrally in Oregon. We're about an hour of driving from Portland, an hour um, from the coast, and then about two hours from the mountains. So we are located where you have really good access to really the state of Oregon in its entirety. Our campus in Corvallis is our main campus and it's about 22 to 25,000 students. And then it's a real college town. So the town of Corvallis nearby has its own little main street full of mom and pop restaurants and stores with their Go Beef stickers in the windows. They're really excited about what we have to offer on campus and all the involvement from our students. One of the really unique things about Oregon State is that we actually have two different campuses. So our secondary campus is the Cascades campus located in Bend, Oregon. This campus is much smaller, around 2,000 students. So if you're a student that wants a really small campus, that's the place for you. And then it's also located right at the base of the mountain. So if you are really excited about being outdoors in nature, hiking, skiing, snowboarding all the time, this is definitely the campus that you want to experience. And then they have some majors that are very specific that we don't offer in Corvallis. Um, so if you're interested in learning about tourism, if you want to do adventure leadership, um, those are the places in the majors that you would seek out at Cascades. When it comes to our Corvallis location, we really have a really active student life on our campus. So we have over 400 student clubs and organizations, and these range from robotics to a Corgi Appreciation Club, where students are just bonding over their love of Corgi dogs. Um, if you have anything that you want to see on our campus that we don't currently have, grab a couple friends and you can start a new club on your own. Uh, so we do have a lot of different things on our campus for students to stay in touch with. We also have seven cultural resource centers, really just allowing students to connect with their own cultural and identity and learn about others as well. So they have their own events throughout the year. So that could be the drag show with the Pride Center, or it could be the salmon bake that happens every year at the Native American Longhouse. We're also division one in the Pac-12. So all of you students who are really excited about athletics, you can still take that on at Oregon State. And then we have 40 club sports as well as intramurals. So you get to decide whether or not you wanna be a varsity athlete practicing throughout the week, or if you just wanna compete against other OSU students on our campus. We do require for our incoming freshmen to stay on campus their freshman year. So I am going to talk a little bit about residential life. It's pictured here is Weatherford Hall. It is the, one of the homes of our College of Business Living and Learning community. So we have living and learning communities spread across our residential halls on our campus. These are different halls that you would stay in based on what you're studying. So you're living with other students who are majoring or minoring in the same thing that you're studying, that you're interested in. You're taking the classroom outside of the classroom, taking it back home with you. So some of the students who live in Weatherford Hall, for example, have classes inside their residence hall. They're not walking across campus to different academic buildings all the time. And we really like to say that getting out there starts here with Oregon State. Research is one of our main pillars. Um, as a university, we have over $450 million in research funding, and we're one of two schools in the entire country to have all federal for federal research grants. So we have Land, Sea, Sun, and Space grants with the United States government. Um, and then we have lots of different research centers across the state of Oregon. So we have the Hatfield Marine Science Center for those students who are interested in oceanography or environmental science. We have race, research vessels out there where you can take a term or a year studying, doing research on a research vessel. And then we also have the McDonald Dunn Research Forest for everyone who's interested in forestry. We have over 200 different academic programs spread across 10 different colleges. I'm going to focus on the more specific programs to Oregon State that we have, but you can use the QR code in the corner if you want to find your major. So we have the University Exploratory Studies Program. This is for those of you who don't know what you want to major in yet. 
This is a program where you have an advisor who lets you make sure that you're exploring different majors, you're finding what you're passionate about, but you're not getting behind. You're still taking all those classes that you need to graduate in four years. And then we have the Honors College. It operates as like a private school within our university. So you would apply to get in. And I always like to tell students, it's not about doing more work, but it's about really connecting with the material on a deeper level. So you actually do a thesis as a part of being in the Honors College. And when you graduate, you get an Honors College diploma. So when it comes to our admissions, we are completely doing a holistic review and we are also test optional. So you do not need to send ACT or SAT to be evaluated for admission or for scholarships, um, but we will need either your Common App or application you can do directly on our website in addition to your essay. Um, and we're really just gonna be looking at your grades, the kind of courses that you're taking. We also practice rolling admissions. So we will be taking applications until August 25th for fall 2021. When it comes to scholarships and aids, we have some different scholarships that we'll evaluate you for just based off of your application. So nothing extra needs to be sent in. But then we also have a website called Scholar Dollars. This is for admitted students. And it'll show you all the different scholarships from different departments and organizations across campus that you qualify for. And you'll be able to apply through that. And of course, we recommend the students always fill out the FAFSA and submit that so that you can see all the federal aid and work study that you qualify for. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, on the screen, you'll see a QR code to look at some of our virtual visits. Again, my name is Alexis Colbert. I am the admissions officer for this region, and I'll put my information in the chat. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Alexis. All right. And our next school is Southern Illinois University. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share a little bit about Southern Illinois University. Just to start off, SIU, we are a public research university located in Carbondale, Illinois. And what our campus looks like is we have about 10,000 undergraduate students on campus currently. And with that student population, we have over 100 different countries represented. So we do bolster a large international student population, which is really awesome. And then by the time you include our graduate students, our law students, and medical students, we have about 13,000 students on campus. And so compared to some other public universities, this is about mid-size. And so what this means for you is that our faculty to student ratio is 13 to one. And so less than 5% of our classes are 50 um, students and larger. And so that means most of your classes are gonna be between 20 and 30 um, other students within your class. So you're not gonna be a nameless space in a large lecture hall, but you're gonna get to have really personalized interactions with your faculty members, which is really awesome. So within SIU, we have over 200 undergraduate programs offered um, from almost anything that you can think of within our different colleges. And then uh, with us being a research university, all of our faculty are participating in research. They are writing articles, they are presenting. And so students as early as their freshman year can get involved with that research and, and be building their resume in the areas that they are studying. So by the time that they graduate with us, not only do they have the credential, but they have the hands-on experience to match that. And so we'll go ahead and move forward. One thing that is really important to note about SIU is that we invest in our students. So over 90% of our students receive some form of financial assistance from us. So whether this be through grants or scholarships, we also work to offer um, discounted tuition for students who are legacy. And that is when your parents are alumni from our institution. And then we also do not have out-of-state tuition. So as long as you are a domestic non-resident, you will be charged our in-state tuition rate. We have some really awesome scholarship opportunities for incoming freshmen based off of GPA. And so these are what we call merit-based scholarships. You do not have to apply for these, but you are automatically evaluated for these whenever you apply and send us your transcripts. So these are the different tiers. Our minimum GPA requirements are a 2.75. So just meeting that minimum GPA requirement, you'll be awarded $1,500 a year for all four years. These are some of our other scholarships that we have that are merit-based. And then our most competitive and prestigious scholarship is our Chancellor Scholarship, um, which is our room and board tuition fees. Everything is covered in that. And so once you meet those minimum GPA requirements, you'll be invited to submit a separate application for that. Um, there's an interview process um, and we have about 25 students every year who awarded that really awesome scholarship. 
On top of that, once students are admitted into the university, they can submit our general scholarship application, which automatically applies them for over 600 different scholarships. For incoming freshmen, they are required to live on campus. And so we have different residence halls available, both general student population, and then we also have LLCs for all of our academic colleges and programs. So if you're wanting to live with other students who are in the program that you're in and who are studying the things that you are, you can elect to do that. Included in our um, housing costs is our anytime meal plan. So as long as our dining halls are open, you can go anytime. Um, all of our utilities, cable and internet, computer labs, furnished rooms, um, our laundry is included in that. So you don't have to save those coveted quarters in order to do, to do a couple loads of laundries. Um, so that's a little bit about our housing. Another important thing to note is that we are the Salukis. And so I know I didn't hear or know what a Saluki was when I first came to SIU. And so they are an Egyptian hunting dog and that is our mascot. And so that makes us unique because we are the only Salukis in the country. And what's really cool is every once in a while you, you'll get to see some real live Salukis on campus and they're really cute and they're really furry, so that's fun. Um, so we have uh, NCAA Division I sports on campus. We are a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, so baseball, basketball, football, we have a new women's soccer team and they're actually doing really well this year so far. So definitely check us out. But then we also have um, some really awesome renovated facilities. So as far as campus life and student involvement, this is just one of the components of that, um, but it makes it a lot of fun for students to experience. Currently, this is our estimated budget for students. And so overall, we're at about $25,500 for tuition, fees, and room and board. And so again, keep in mind those scholarship opportunities because we work to make and offer a quality and affordable education for students. In order to apply, we just have an online application. Once you submit that application with your $40 fee, we just need a copy of your transcripts. Um, as you will see, it says send official ACT slash SAT scores, but that is only if you are going into competitive degree programs that require such. Other than that, our general admissions requirements do not require SAT or SAT scores. We're more than likely to send them in if you would like, but we do not need them in order to process an admissions decision for you. So definitely check us out on social media. We're always posting things, whether it's cool different spots on campus or student highlights. Um, in order to get just a feel of what it might be like, definitely check us out there. And this is my contact information if you would like to get a hold of me. And definitely come visit us on campus. We are currently doing campus visits and I'll put a link in the chat for that. Great, thank you so much, Southern Illinois University. Uh, next up, we have St. Catherine University. Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Ann Moe. I am an admission counselor at St. Kate's and I'm also a St. Kate's alum. So I'm pretty excited to talk to you today about St. Kate's. So let's get started with a brief overview of St. Kate's. We were founded in 1905 by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. And this is important because this was about 10 years, or excuse me, 15 years before women had the right to vote in the US. And even at that time, um, the Sisters of St. Joseph really valued education and higher education specifically for women. And their influence really does still live on on our campus today. We are the largest private women's college in the nation. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later because it's one of the most you think, unique things about St. Kate's. We are located in the residential neighborhood of Highland Park. Um, in St. Paul, we are, have a very walkable, whoops, technology, not always my friend. We have a very walkable campus um, and we're close to the Mississippi River, a mini Target, coffee shops, restaurants, um, fun things like that, as well as downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. I think that St. Kate's is predominantly known for our health sciences and education. Nursing is our biggest major, but we have more than 60 majors. We have 10 pre-professional programs, including programs that will take you right back to St. Kate's like pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, um, pre-physician assistant, and pre-public health. So what makes us unique? The women's college experience is definitely a unique thing. Most of our students who attend St. Kate's went to public co-ed high schools. I went to a public co-ed high school um, and I didn't really know what to expect from a women's college. Our classroom experience is very hands-on. We know that most women learn best when they are in hands-on and discussion-based 
discussion based environments, excuse me. Um, and leadership and confidence are really built into the curriculum. Women who attend women's colleges as opposed to co-ed institutions are more likely to graduate from college in four years. And if they go on to um, a graduate degree, they're more likely to graduate with that graduate degree as well. We have a pretty diverse campus, about 52% of our most recent incoming class identified as BIPOC. And so um, when I first started looking at colleges, I sort of thought of private schools as being predominantly white and affluent, and that's not necessarily the case at St. Kate's. So in all of these discussion-based classrooms, um, you aren't just hearing from one perspective, you're hearing from many perspectives. Like our name suggests, and like I mentioned, the Sisters of St. Joseph, we are a Catholic university, but um, our student body represents a number of different religions. We obviously have some Catholic students. We have students from a number of different Christian faith traditions, as well as Muslim students, Jewish students, and um, agnostic and atheist students too. So if the religion piece is concerning to you, try not to let it be. Social justice is really where that piece of things comes out. About 75% of our students participate in service learning before they graduate, graduate from St. Kate's. And this is usually included in a classroom environment. So either a one-time opportunity or an opportunity that spans a semester. And when I think of service learning, I really think of um, volunteering with a really strong piece of reflection because we want to build strong world citizens who really care about other people. We also have more than 600 different internship partners, including places like um, 3M, Target, Medtronic, Ecolab, the Mayo Clinic. So know that regardless of your goals and your aspirations, we're really well connected with the greater community. How do you make all of this happen for you? What are the details for applying? Our application opens on August 1st and we will accept either the, app, the Common App or the St. Kate's specific application. We operate on rolling admission and we have a really holistic review. So you, a student in their senior year could apply on August 1st or later in the year, March 1st, May 1st, that's okay. I really do recommend um, applying earlier rather than later though, simply for the peace of mind. Um, and like I said, we have a holistic review. So we don't require the ACT or the SAT, although you are welcome to submit it. We're looking at your grades, your letter of recommendation, your writing sample, and we're, we're looking at things like trends in your grades, the classes that you've been taking, and the potential that you have to succeed as a student. Um, when it comes to scholarships at St. Kate's, you're automatically considered for our merit scholarships, which range from twenty-one dollars to $32,000, and those are renewable every year for four years years. The sticker price of a place like St. Kate's can be kind of shocking, but with a strong merit scholarship and, of course, completing the, the FAFSA, um, a private education can be very much within reach. So thank you so much for coming to this session. I'm really glad that I was able to um, share with all of you. Our campus is open for um, individual appointments. Everything is COVID safe. We have uh, masking and social distancing really well promoted. And that was a really great time to visit, frankly, because it means that when you go on tour, it's you and your family and the tour guide. So you get to ask all of the questions that you have um, and you don't need to worry about other people getting in the way. I will put my contact information in the chat. And again, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much to St. Kate's. And our next presenter is from the University of Arizona. Thanks, Andy, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. My name is Emily Martinez and I am the admissions representative for the Midwest area. I am a regional representative, so I am based in the Chicagoland area, but I am happy to be here to answer all of your questions about Arizona. So to dive right in, the University of Arizona was founded in 1885, actually when Arizona was still a territory, not even a state yet. Our main campus is located in Tucson, Arizona. Since 1885, our campus has definitely grown and continues to grow. Our campus is one square mile. Sometimes when people think of larger universities, they think that they have to travel to get to other parts of our campus, but it is all centrally located one square mile. You can walk from one end and the other in about 15 or 20 minutes. On our campus, you will find 20 different colleges, 23 dorms, over 35 restaurants, a movie theater, two rec centers, even a post office. So everything you need is just a quick walk away. 
We have about 35,000 undergraduate students. And if you add in our graduate students, another 10,000, um, we have about 45,000 45, students on our campus. Um, we do have a very diverse student body. Over 40% of our students do come from out of state. In fact, we have students coming from every single state in the US. And even though that does seem like a large number, we're still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Our class size is average between 20 and 29 students, and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1. But there are tons of advantages to being at a large public university of our size. With over 250 degree programs, we literally have just about any program to meet your educational needs. Some of our most popular programs include our nationally top 20 ranked business college, our nationally recognized engineering programs, as well, well as our pre-health and medical science programs. The University of Arizona does have two medical schools with access to a lot of really great resources. We're also known nationwide for our dance and fine arts programs. Being a large university, a large public university, we offer big time opportunities for our, all students and all majors. We are a top tier uh, world class institution ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. Arizona is a premier tier one research one institution and a member of the prestigious Association of American Universities and the AAU is an exclusive club of about 65 colleges and universities from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley um, and to the University of Arizona. And it, this title um, is given because we focus on providing research opportunities for our students and those research opportunities come across all disciplines across all majors. Not only do we have countless academic opportunities, we also have a lot going on outside of the classroom. We have over 600 student-led uh, clubs to participate in, and the variety of clubs uh, is something that makes the social scene at Arizona truly amazing. Our clubs and orgs range from academics to leadership and student government to special interests to Greek life to athletics and recreation and everything in between. My favorite club to always point out is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for our Division I Arizona athletic teams. And our Zona Zoo has been consistently ranked by ESPN as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in the Pac-12 conference. Go Cats! Another great way to get involved is to live on campus. At the University of Arizona, we have some really great um, and flexible housing options for students. We offer 23 different dorms. Um, first year students are not required to live on campus. They also, first year students and all students, get to choose where they live on campus. So all 23 of our dorms house freshmen through seniors and you get complete freedom in, live, in choosing where you wanna live if you wanna live on campus. Um, although it's not required, more than 75% of our first year students do choose to live on campus. Tucson is very much a college town. Um, everywhere you go, you're going to see our red and blue colors. You're going to see the block A. Um, the actual city of Tucson offers a great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, shopping, restaurants, bars. Um, they're often offering concerts, festivals, open markets, and so much more. My favorite thing to highlight about uh, Tucson is the gorgeous weather. Being from the Midwest, I have to comment. Um, it's an average school time temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine a year. So what's not to like about that? To get down to logistics, if you are interested in applying to Arizona, this is what you need to know. Our application is simple. We do accept the common application or the coalition application. We do not require essays, personal statements are optional, and we do not consider letters of recommendation. We are also test optional. So when we evaluate students for admission, we are looking for some very specific information. This is a state requirement set forth by the Arizona Board of Regents, but what we're looking, is, looking for is to ensure that you have completed these 16 core courses listed here. So we are going to pull the best grades from these courses to calculate your core GPA, and that will be used to determine your admissibility. That core GPA also determines your merit scholarship eligibility. No separate application required. You're automatically considered when you apply to Arizona. If you are interested in connecting with us, we have a lot of really great virtual options on our website. Definitely check it out. 
One that I always want to point out is our Ask a Wildcat program. Every Tuesday on our Instagram page, we host Ask a Wildcat. So check us out there. I will also drop my contact information into the chat. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you, University of Arizona. Uh, next up, we have Vermilion College. Hey, everyone. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for sticking around and listening to me. We heard a lot of really cool presentations, and I'm, I'm really happy that you all are here and that you're getting to check out all these different schools and hear all this different information about the schools and the type of things they offer. And the reason that I start with that and I say that is because I think the most important thing that you have to do when you're evaluating colleges and looking at colleges is finding the college that's a good fit for you. You're going to hear it all the time from me. I say it repeatedly. I'm not here to sell you a college. I'm not here to talk you into a college. I want you to take all this type of information that all these other schools have told you and that I'm about to tell you about Vermilion and kind of evaluate it and see how it fits into your college goals. So when I start with that, I wanna tell you about Vermilion because Vermilion is a very different school. And when I say different, I mean in a lot of ways, but mainly because we're really small. We're only about 600 students and we're up in Ely, Minnesota. If you're not familiar with Ely, Minnesota, it's in the far, far Northeastern point in Minnesota. And it's basically up on the Canadian border. So we're way up in the middle of nowhere. The Boundary Waters is out our back door. So we have 1.1 million acres of wilderness out there. And it really means that it changes the student life that's on campus and the things that we offer on campus. So when I talk about being in a small town and a really, really small school, you know, it's important to know things like Walmart, the closest one to us is an hour and a half away. So what that means for students is their student life often focuses on doing stuff outdoors. We encourage our students to be able to hunt, fish, camp, hike, bike, canoe, kayak. We encourage you to go outdoors because that is one of the big things that there is to do up in, on campus. That being said, the majority of our students are going to have some love of the outdoors. Even so, we also have a lot of activities that happen within our normal college too. We're a residential campus, so that does mean that we have housing. All of our housing on campus is what we call apartment style. So that means that you have private kitchens, living rooms, bathrooms. It's more like you're getting your own apartment versus the traditional dorm rooms. And because we are a residential campus, that means that we also have a lot of on-campus student life stuff going on. So if you're into sports, cool. I got football, baseball, basketball for men's, women's. I got volleyball, basketball, and fast pitch. In co-ed, we have a trap league. So if you're into shooting clay targets at all. We also have a lot of intramural sports that are happy on campus, roughly about 12 to 14 a year. And we do a bunch of different club activities too. Half of our clubs are purely for fun. The other half are a little bit more tied into your programs and really focus on building volunteer time and resume stuff. But being a residential campus, that means you just have normal Monday through Friday stuff. You know, there's cafeteria on campus, there's dances, there's oftentimes student life events that are going on. So that's part of your college experience as well. So when you know that our student life is very outdoor oriented and we're kind of in that outdoor, that also means that the majority of our programs also focus on the outdoors. I've always had this tagline, I kind of use it a lot and I say work outdoors. If you're coming up to Vermilion, the vast majority of programs that you're going to find with us are about working outside. It's stuff like forestry, wildlife, wilderness management, outdoor education side of it. If you want to work in the park systems. And many of these programs were one of only a handful of schools in the entire country that offer it. If you want to get into federal law enforcement, specifically in the park service or like U.S. Fish and Game, this is where you come. There's only six of them left in the country. So it's a little bit different in that sense, too. We are a liberal arts school. We are a business school. So if you do want to take some general ed stuff, you can just say, I really love Ely. I love the type of student life that you have. You can come up, you can start pre-professional programming with us as well. So it just offers a lot of different things in that sense. With our freshman students, we don't require students to live on campus. So oftentimes we'll see students living out on resorts, out on the area lakes and things like that. But it is important to note that we do have those on-campus housing options for the students that want to come in that way. The other side of this is, you know, we're Vermilion College. We're up there. We are classified by the state of Minnesota as a community college. So the cool part is everything that I've talked about, you might be thinking in your head, oh, this kind of sounds like normal university, kind of sounds like you were all of a sudden going. In a lot of ways, that's true. But at the same time, when you're coming up to us, you only ever pay the price of a community college. So for an average student coming up there in state or out of state, you're looking at about $13,000 to $14,000 a year. And that covers your tuition, your housing, your food, your books, kind of the whole package with it coming onto campus. 
you can fill out your FAFSA, you can do the same grants, loans, everything else that you can anywhere else. But being rated as a community college like that, you are getting the state price or the state, state costs on that. Other than that, as far as our application pro process goes, we're open enrollment. So that basically means that if you have graduated high school, you're going to be welcome to apply to our college and will be accepted to our college. Um, our students being accepted in will enroll in any of the programs that they choose, anything like that, aside from a couple of competitive programs such as Vet Tech, where we need a little bit more information about you before we can put you directly into that program. So like I said, if this stuff sounds like a fit and you're going, all right, cool, that kind of sounds like me, Awesome. Check us out, learn a little bit more. Go to bcc.edu. I'll throw my contact information in the chat, just like everyone else, um, but get into it. And for those of you that are out that are stuck with us and said, whoa, that is not something I'm looking for. Totally cool too. You know, check out some of these other places and get a good feel for it. All right. Good luck in your journeys. I look forward to hearing from some of you. All right. Thank you so much to Vermilion College. Okay. We have about nine minutes left. And so what I'd like to do next is ask all of our presenters to turn their cameras back on so we can do a little Q&A. So I'm going to pull up a question real quick. And let's just go ahead. Let's start with Michigan Tech again. And the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? My advice would be go and visit the different schools that you're looking at. So as you can see in this six, these six schools that presented to you today, we're all a little bit different in size and location. Um, so it's definitely good to go and visit the schools. Um, it also gives you a very good feel of how you're going to be treated the rest of your time there. So if there's anything you take away from this tonight, that would be it. Go and visit the campuses you're looking at. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think the thing that I would recommend to students is to really pay attention to those essays that you're writing. Um, a lot of schools now are doing holistic admissions and will require an essay. And especially if you're doing the Common App, where you get to choose the prompt that you're answering. Um, don't choose the prompt that you think is what we want to read. Write about what you're passionate about, the best prompt that suits what you care about. Because if you're writing an essay and you're not excited about it, chances are whoever's reading it doesn't feel that excitement either. Awesome. My advice would be to definitely look at the services that are available on campus. What are you interested in? What do you need help in? And learn more about the different universities or colleges that you're looking at and how they can support you, you know, during your journey with them, um, just to ensure that they're going to be able to help you succeed your goals and, and what you want to get out of your experience. Everything that everyone has already said, it's all fantastic advice. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is ask all of the questions that you have. Don't be afraid. Don't think that you will sound foolish. Um, the answers that you need, there are things that you need before you can make a decision um, and get them from lots of different people. Don't just talk to your admission counselor because our job is ultimately in sales and we are able to connect you to a lot of other people who can, can help you make that choice. Yes, absolutely. So much great advice going on. Um, the only thing that I would also add is explore all of your options. Even if you think, I know this is what I want. I've always wanted this. Maybe it's not what you want. Um, definitely explore locations, big, small, uh, private, public, everything out there. This is your choice. You want to make sure you have all the information you need to make the best decision for you. Plain and simply find your fit. That's it. That's what I'm going to tell you time and time again is I don't care if we have the perfect program for you. I don't care if you look at the student life, however you look at it, take everything into consideration and wait to enroll in a place that you just feel at home, that it feels like a good place to you. And that all of a sudden you go, yep, this is me. This is who I am. It'll make your college experience way better than anything else that you could do. Yeah, thanks. A lot of great advice there. So let's uh, look at another question here. So let us know. Let's start with Michigan Tech again. What's your favorite event or tradition on campus? All right. So I mentioned a little bit about this in my presentation. Um, Winter Carnival would be my favorite campus tradition. 
Um, it's a week long, or excuse me, month long statute, statute competition. The students, when they come back after semester break, so the middle of January, um, the different student orgs and groups on campus will start building these huge snow sculptures. There's a different theme every year for Winter Carnival, so the statues have to be built off of that theme. So if you think about what a bunch of engineers can come up with, it's pretty impressive, some of these, and the intricate detail that goes with them. So any pictures that you see online or anything like that, um, there's some really good ones out there, but it doesn't do it justice. Um, seeing them in person is pretty fantastic. Also, if you ever want to experience Winter Carnival, uh, make sure you make your hotel reservations a year in advance, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. So it is our biggest and largest and most popular tradition on campus. At Oregon State, I would say my favorite tradition is so this is like a music festival that we have every single spring term and we are on a quarter system. So for us, spring term is the last term of the year for most students who are gonna be on campus in the summer. Um, and it's really just time you see all of campus come to life, but it's also great because you see the town of Corvallis really engaging as well. If you can imagine a music festival taking over an entire college campus, we've had people like Macklemore perform. You have people outside making barbecues, you know, just cooking. And it's really great because you see both campus and students, but also the town really come together and it just brings the entire town to life in that moment. So one of the longstanding traditions that SIU has is we have what's called the Great Cardboard Boat Regatta. And that is where we have our campus lake, which is on um, our main campus. And basically students are commissioned with fashioning their own cardboard boat. And whoever can make theirs go the farthest because usually people don't make it to the end because obviously cardboard is not a good material for water, but whoever can get the farthest across the lake um, wins the competition. So it's kind of like a big funny uh, tradition that we've always had usually gets news coverage. Um, so that's probably one of my favorite traditions. My favorite campus tradition happens in the spring. It happens the, the weekend before finals week and it's called Dewdrop Bop. So um, our pond on campus is called the Dewdrop Pond and um, it's really, it's a little carnival. So there are rides and fun food and a lot of St. Kate's graduates come back and um, faculty and staff bring their kids. And it's really just a really, a, a big fun celebration before finals and it's celebrating the, the success of another academic year. At the University of Arizona, um, one of my favorite traditions has to do with the nearby mountain. So the actual city of Tucson is very flat, but we are surrounded by desert mountains. And the night before um, the academic year starts, our students hike up what's known as a mountain. They hike up there and they repaint our black A, which is right there, our black A into the side of the mountain that can be seen from anywhere in the city of Tucson to kind of signify the start of a new academic year. I'm gonna talk about a little unofficial tradition on our campus. My favorite one that we have, we always call it the Friday night pickup parade because every Friday night from about the start of the semester, pretty much all the way through every Friday night, there's a line of pickups that are going up to housing and all the students are jumping in to go off and have an adventure. They go out hunting, they go out fishing. There's a lot of hiking going on. They explore some of the wilderness and they just take off for the night. So it's always kind of fun to watch them line up and it doesn't matter if they know each other or not, everyone's jumping in a pickup and they're going. Awesome, well, thank you so much. And it uh, helps me reminisce about my college days too. So um, we're just about at the end though. So I do wanna say uh, thank you so much to all of our presenters today. And also thank you for joining us. Um, just so you know, when you close this window, there's gonna be a link to a really quick four question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide on that. Uh, also, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted, as I mentioned earlier, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. In about a week, you're going to be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thanks again.